Okay, everybody, I have a real treat for you today. I'm standing here outside Dennis Alberg's residence. Now, this is very special because Dennis has made his name, he's made his fortune um, through businesses here in Iowa, and I think it's actually national as well. So he's got an absolute pristine residence right behind me own private golf course so that definitely drew my attention but here's the part where you are going to like what you're going to enjoy now mr alberg has got a massive massive private collection of classics chevrolet corvettes um, i've heard it's about 1500 corvettes <laughs> all in the original colors in pristine conditions and that's what we are doing today we're going to go ahead and see the private collection it's right here on his residence i believe it's in there as you can see it says chevrolet parts right opposite that golf course which i'm so tempted to go and play i love golf so this is really awesome and i'm very excited to be here and i'm thankful for dennis albert for allowing me and inviting me the opportunity to come and film this and show you guys this is not open to the public. Um, what it gets open for is charity events. Um, so Dennis uh, donates a lot of money and time into fundraising organizations. And um, that's the only time that it gets open for. Because you could imagine if it was open for the entire public, then it is his house. But the place is great. I met him at uh, the Good Guys event. I knew of him beforehand. But um, that's where I met him and I thought I'd interview him and I explained what I was doing and I had heard about his collection. So that was really neat. And now I'm gonna show you guys the biggest private collection of classics right here. <laughs> said before I'm here at the private collection I believe it looks like the biggest private collection of classic cars in the world is what I'm going to say prove me wrong write your comments tell me what you think but this place is absolutely amazing Dennis Alberg his own private collection of the classics I'm here today with John who's one of the caretakers of this awesome private museum he's gonna show us around how you going, John? It's it's going pretty good here today. It's a long day at the car show today. We yep. took the uh, the Burgundy Copo 427 car, and then we took the uh, Le Mans Blue uh, Yenko car, 427 car. Uh, those are the two that I had um, Dennis interviewed uh, with those cars at the Good Guys. So that's on the, that video. You'll be able to see him and his two cars. I only brought two to the show. So yeah, yeah. this museum, John, is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I'm lost for words. What, how long have you been so working I've here? been here since 2016 I worked one year part-time and then after that I switched over to full-time and since then uh, the collection has grown from my time about 160 to 190 cars most of it was already here when I was here yep um, so the collection like I said is 190 cars um, it's not unfortunately it's not the largest car collection in the world but yep. uh, as far as just pure Chevrolet cars um, it is one of the larger ones. I'm not going to say it is the largest one because somebody out there probably does have a larger one. Okay. But uh, um, the the highlights of the collection are that it is mostly convertibles, and then there's every color of '57 Chevy, um, every year consecutive from 1912 to '75 of uh, passenger cars, coupes, wow. convertibles, uh, missing a couple of the uh, early '70s Impalas. Um, uh, we have every color of 69 Yenko Chevrolet sold from Don Yenko Chevrolet. Yeah. Um, we have a future liner that can dig it put together. Um, what else? There's, just, this, there's, this, there's a lot to get into. There, there really course. is, and everybody's going to gonna see that here. Yep. Um, and we'll just kind of, I'll just hit some points. You're going to notice a lot of signs around here. Um, those are all original, uh, no, no reproductions. Um, 
Uh, the gas globes, when we get to the other room, they're all original, not reproductions, with the exceptions of the ones on top of the pumps, because right. we move those around sometimes, and uh, to drop a globe off there would just be catastrophic. But, Every single car in here is drivable. Uh, well, yes, for the most part. Yes. I mean, they they need you know some upkeep, some maintenance, some yep. upgoing. Um, it's we we would like to drive them, but a lot of them have a lot of historical value that the the risks the, the risk. risk to reward ratio is 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 out there pretty far. So it does look like obviously most of the cars have been restored. Uh, yes, so that, that's one of the main points of the collection is yeah. that um, a lot of it is put back to original or as original as possible. As so you're not going to see a lot of custom stuff in here. I think in here we have one custom car and that's just because we got to fix a couple things yeah. on it because that's Den one of Dennis's personal driver cars that he drives around. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's mostly put back to original. 1913 Chevrolet Royal Mail. This yep, and you just shoot on down the line and you get to see all the years, all, how all the years change. And, I mean, how, how did this all begin? I mean, I understand we all have a passion and this, this is just insane though. So, the reason why you see a lot of the convertibles is because Dennis's dad didn't let him have a convertible growing up as a kid so this was kind of his way about getting, getting back, back at him, getting back at him for that so that's why you see a lot of convertibles with the exception of the the 69 camaros because the the muscle cars um but uh <laughs> i so, did hear about so that it story. actually started this room right here yep. um, that we're in it started with just this with a handful of cars and it was golf cart storage right here and then uh, my boss, Andy, he came in and uh, Dennis hired him on to kind of get a direction going with the collection and yeah. they decided let's go original convertibles and let's go from there and it just kind of just exploded <laughs> from there. And then the room over there, that, that was an addition over there, that was the second addition for, for more cars. And then when we get into the blue room, um, that was the third edition, which they had to dig underground to to get that going. But uh, wow! So the the only Chevrolet Deluxe is all convertible. Yeah, the only years you're missing in here is when um, World War II happened. Uh, that's that's the only years you're missing. That's just because they quit production of cars there. Um, one of the cool cars in this row that you don't see ever is right here. It is the 39 Chevrolet convertible. It is right hand drive, and I believe this car came from Australia. Yes, it came from Australia. So I can just drive off with this now. Yes, uh, they <laughs> had to. This was one of the ones I think they had to import from Canada. I think it was. So okay. that was the, this was one of the first import cars that uh, one of the office ladies had to kind of figure out the paperwork on to get. Well, to that's get the it thing in that in, so. in the 30s the car industry was absolutely booming in mm -hmm. Australia. So I'm not surprised. This is one of this is one of two Australian cars that we have here. The other one is the Ute over there um, in, in the truck section. Okay. And would that be Holden? Yep, yep. That's He's a Holden. Got a Holden. Actually, we had all those guys from Holden SS come over at one point, and they okay. all got a tour of the place and look around. Wow. Uh, but yep, we have two two. Uh, that two that Australian is a rare cars. find because Holden has stopped production, and um, mm -hmm. and I can say that because I'm sad because I sold my Holden Commodore before I came here so but yes if I if I could I would have definitely shipped it over and kept it so then we get into some of the older old, or I should say newer Impalas for mm -hmm. us 68 um, 67 um, the was that 71 70 and then the uh, uh, 50s one there um, this one here, this is a 69 NASCAR pace car. This is a real yeah. pace car. Yeah. Uh, it's been to good guys. That's where we're at today. Uh, this is pretty cool for us. SS 396 car. It has the uh, NASCAR lap notes in it and the uh, roll bar for it, wow. which is which is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> I've just lost the word. And we, we have, we actually have three pace cars here, including this one. We have the uh, Chevrolet official pace car and that is not a real pace car that was something you could order back in the day and they put your your decals in the trunk and then you could put them on yourself 
And then the one right next to that, that is another pace car. That, I believe that one too is a real pace car. There is the 55s. Yep. I was looking at the 57s before and I yep, saw a few yep. 56s. But... So we have two two convertible 55s and then we have a hard top 55 over there. So that, and then we have a black convertible 55 that's, over there. That's so brilliant. That's, uh, 58 metallic convertible. We got a couple of those. Uh, this happens to be a blue one. Wow. Uh, this is one of the rest of my cars that we have in here. There's a couple things done to it, but uh, this is the last one finished up. We didn't do this. It just we uh, we sent it out and had it repainted black. It was army green, but it came done like this and just put different uh, new school, old school wheels on it, basically. Wow. And then uh, we go into this section here. This is every year of Chevelle ever made. Um, big block convertible cars, uh, 72s over here, and then it goes back down through the years that way. Um, some Osmonds trucks. Here's the 48 Holden truck here. Uh, that one's from Australia. Here we go. 48 Holden Chevy Ute pickup. And uh, this truck actually, I believe went to good guys and did very, very well. I believe it was. But Yep, there's a sticker on the uh, yeah on the headlight. Built only in Australia by Holden. Yep. Wooden floor beds and became very handy for hauling loads in the Australian outback. It's definitely a rare find. Brilliant. So you're going to see as we get into some of the muscle cars, you're going to notice they're all big block cars. That's usually what we can collect is the, the bigger bigger motor cars. Um, just kind of just so he doesn't them. have a particular favorite car. He just likes cars and classic. One, one of his favorite cars in the collection we'll actually see later. It's okay. the it's a toss up between the gold Yanko and the silver Z06 car and the dark blue ZL1 car. Okay. Um, so here we finish I saw up. some of the Yankos and yeah. they just... Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Model 2 truck, that is one of the few that is put together and fully restored, which is pretty cool. Uh, we had some judges come in and look at it to judge it, and mm -hmm. they just handed the clipboard back and said, uh, we're going to go off of this one for a standard, uh, which was pretty cool. It, wow. it really was. And this, car, this one was done here. It was actually done here. Yep, yep, this one was short here. I wasn't a part of it, but yep. Andy and a, a, few of the, a few of the other guys that used to work here were. So obviously, Dennis has got his whole team of uh, restoration guys who... Uh, we, we did, and then it kind of just downsized from just two of us in here, a couple part-time guys. Okay. Uh, we have a motor builder, uh, Jim. Uh, he worked out at DMAC, uh, uh, retired now. And then uh, my daddy comes in, does some body work here and there. And we have a guy out of Madrid who does some. So it gets around town. It's, there's okay. some guys who do it. Uh, this <laughs> here is a Canopy Express Truck 49. This is what they gave um, produce farmers in California. I love it. That's what, uh, so what it was is they could just pull up yep. and um, basically open up the sides as you can see and they could just sell their produce and they could just from sell, the truck. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, going up straight by the, straight. Having the top on it is what makes it is what makes it special, which is really really cool. Uh, you don't ever ever see these. Um, I personally haven't seen another. I, I haven't seen one of these <laughs> either, and I've seen a fair few by now. But uh, then we have one tractor in the collection. This was uh, Dennis's grandpa's tractor, so that's the wow. significance of that. Um, wow. That one was done here before before my time working here. Okay. But that, that's the significance of the of the tractor. Yep. Grandfather's tractor right here. Then you move into the barber shop area. There's a barber shop. This now, is, what is, is a barber shop doing inside a car museum? Right, uh, from from my understanding of it, uh, is it, it reminded him of one where he got his haircut uh, type type of deal here. Uh, so it's just, it's just kind of cool just seeing an old school barber shop in here. And that's not the only setup display that we have. We have we have another one which is pretty cool. Why not? Yeah. Why not? You know, your garage, your cars, yeah. you put whatever you want in the corner. And this is the <laughs> 1912 Little. This is the first uh, Chevrolet GM and then Little Company that came together to create this. Wow. 1912. 
I love these because they remind me of the horse and carriages, which is what was the means of transportation mm -hmm. before we went on to four wheels. And then you move into the sedan here, uh, and then another one. And these are these are a little bit more rare. This is, this is a Landau and the FB sedan. Uh, you don't ever ever see those. Yeah. Then you move down to the next two, the Master Coach and the. Uh, Master Deluxe Coupe, and from my understanding, these cars have never been restored. They might have a few new pieces on them, but they're like mostly original. If you if you wow. put your head in there and smell, it still smells like Grandma's interior of her house. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Wow! So this is original paint, original structures, original yep. wheels. Yep. Wow! Where did you find this? Uh, two school teachers owned them. One was a one. Schoolroom teacher, like a one one house schoolroom teacher yeah. there, and uh, she had the car and decided just to never drive, and just kept walking to school. The other one was a college professor, wow. and he, he lived on campus and he just walked. So, and wow. they're both sold from the from the families. And these are original interiors. Wow. This is brilliant. Do you think that obviously we're not going to turn it on, but these engines would still work? Uh, yes, they, they, they should still run and drive and everything. You know, right. it, it's it's more when we, when we cross that bridge into whether or not something will run and drive or not. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of maintenance that goes into it. So if we want to take a vehicle out, it's a matter of pulling out, checking fluids, inspecting yeah. it. And they all have their little quirks because yes. When they come fresh off for restoration, they don't get driven like they should. Um, not necessarily just in our collection, but in any other collection. Um, you got to drive them after work up those corks. So yeah. you're always fighting those little things along yes. the way. But... And then there's always a risk of them damaging. Right. The... right. So yeah, yeah, along that lines. But yeah. uh, this is supposed to be one of the first uh, motorhomes uh, ever built. There's a whole bunch of them made, and they travel traveled across America. Wow, in a wooden box. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Wow, look at this. First, look at those chairs. Is this how they, they would have had the chairs? from Detroit to California, but yeah, they just put a box on wheels and threw some furniture in there, and that, that was it. That was it. You know, don't worry about these falling off as you're turning around. This is just brilliant. And look, they've actually made it into like a, a home. <laughs> with tiles. <gasps> First motorhome. And wow. Each camper that they made was unique, so this is the only one like this. Like this. So there's not another one like this. Yeah, they didn't make them in mass um, production. Can you go into this gas station here, and it's supposed to replicate the old Texaco oil station, and this gas station here is a original gas station. It actually could, was a gas station. That you could buy like out of a catalog and right. you could set it up yourself and then you bought your own gas pumps from a specific uh, manufacturer and then you made up your own um, gas globe. So that's why there's so many gas globes that you see because anybody could have a gas station back then. That's wow. why you're, that's why yes, to the room, you're gonna see a bunch of variations of, of gas globes. And there's different sizes, you know, there's like 15 inches or 17 inches, you know, or something like that. But this is the beautiful Corvette. This is this is where we start getting to. I mean, everything's yeah. interesting that we're seeing, but we start getting to a little bit yeah. more here. This is a C1 Corvette 53 white one, and it has the blue flame engine in it. And then you move down. I to know. I read one. that this was the this only one that's believed to the be the first one, the first red Corvette to ever be produced. You can't. 100% prove that, but based off of numbers and times, you you kind of get a grasp of which car it could be. But this is believed to be to be that car. Um, then yeah, you just see all the years change as you as you walk down here. It's just amazing. Like as everybody can see, this this is just one room. <laughs> Corvette in every single color yeah. and then that you, got, ever made. you got a huge dealership Chevrolet sign above you I mean it's just it, it's it's really a lot to take in wow and you know like like I was telling you we could sit here and talk about a car all day, all day long but really why don't we come to the bellies oh yeah if we can go we my can go. favorite car is a Chevy Belly so you tell Mr. Halberg that if he ever wants to sell one of these. Uh, 
So this is where we get into the 57 Chevys. This is one of his favorite, favorite cars yep. um, to have. Uh, so there is every color here, and some of them are fuel injected. I believe this one is fuel injected. Yeah, this one's fuel injected. Uh, they're not all fuel injected. Um, the fuel injection systems are super rare and they're really hard to come by. And having all the parts for them to make them work and operate are really, really hard to come by. And that's how they had made it with the fuel injection. Well, in they, they made them. They made them a whole bunch of different sizes, from okay. uh, from a six cylinder to to a V8, and then a bunch of different carburetor options and stuff. So there, there was a lot of options you could get, but the highest package was the was the Bel Air, and then the fuel injection option. So the silver one was in the other room, and the black one is is right here. Okay. Now we can see the gas globes okay, across yeah. we, the entire room there we, and down the middle. We get into the gas <laughs> globes, so not all of them are hung up. I believe there's still about another 150, 200 on the floor over there. I think in total there's somewhere between 600 and 800. I'm going to give you a wide range because that's not my yep. that's not my area that I'm in. And wow. then you uh, get into the, well, we can talk about this El Camino over here real okay. quick. This is a pretty cool car here. So this is a 70 El Camino SS. The original paperwork is on the wall right there for it. Wow. So what makes this car really special is that it is a big block SS car 454, but it has a bench seat and no power steering and it's an automatic. So it has the SS package with none of the SS stuff on it. And that's how the guy special ordered it. That's the best way to explain that car. That's what makes it unique. So it's got it's automatic transmission, Yep. but it doesn't have power steering. No power steering. Okay. And bench seat, usually if you got the SS package, you got the, you got the bucket seats. Yep. Which makes that pretty cool. And there's the bed. And you said 450 block? Uh, four, 454. 454. Yep. And it's down under here. I got to remember a lot about a little about a lot of cars is the best way to explain that. <laughs> yep. 454. Turbo jet as well, wow. Yep, Four, 450 horse instead of a four and a quarter horse. I don't know if you can get a four and a quarter horse in these, but four, 450 horse. Wow, and this is how it was stock as well. Yep, LS, LS6 engine is, is what it was, but there's a picture of the sign there. And then what's That's really amazing. cool about seeing all the uh, the Impalas in the rear is you get to see how the, the tail lights change, which I think is oh, pretty yep, cool the... in itself. All right, because um, 56, this is, I should say it in the tail light. Uh, can't read it, it's a 56 I believe. Uh, Yep, it, it, it is a 56. It is so, a 56. Right, well, one thing, one thing cool about that is, yep. is if you ever get confused of what car you're looking at, Dennis Alba in the year. Now, has he registered each? Everything is registered and up to date. And wow. when, it, when it comes in, the first thing it does is it goes up to the to the core housing. It's registered. You know, I mean, it's we paid this much for it. It's yep. you know, I it's mean, registered it's, it's exactly and it gets year, insured as well. Every year it's up to date. Everything is insured. I mean. Technically, you could take this car out on the road right now. It's insured and has a license plate on it. I mean, wow. not necessarily that you could drive it out of here, but it could be <laughs> on the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have to wait in line to go and get it registered. Yeah. That's done once a year, up to date, everything. So, wow. And then when we do take it out, we just grab the paperwork for it and, and get it in and there put and it take in there. off. So, it, it, when it comes to that. All right, so as we see the tail lights start to change, then they go into the three. And then from the three, then they go, okay, the three is nice, but let's just make it all one. Back so the, to the three. <laughs> yep. So the the 58 and the 59 are the two popular ones that when you take them out, because they have the big wings on them, yep. everybody's like, wow. So this is the 58. Yep. And that's the 59. Or no, excuse me. That's the 59. And that's the 60. I'm sorry. The 58's right there. 
That's all right. You're excused, John. There's only a few cars you have to know by heart. I, I know, I know a, a little about a lot, not a lot about a little. So if I misspeak or something, somebody oh. knows a lot more than me. And I get people in here all the time. They're like, I used to own one of these. I know all about this. I'm like, tell okay, me about all it. Right. Tell me about it. I know. It's, what can you do about people like yep, that? Yep. This is just, it's brilliant. And then you pass, a, this is a 409 Impala, which is pretty cool. It's got the 409 in it and it is a four speed. And then you get into the 65 Z16 car Mountain Boot SS. This is where muscle car started for Chevrolet, 396 car. This car is super, super rare. You hardly ever see these for sale. 65. Uh, yep, no? 65, yep. Yep, Sorry. 65 I, Malibu. I 66, but yep, 65. Wow. The beginning of the muscle car era. And then you kind of finish out into the Impalas and the 57 Chevys, and then you get into the Coco Camaro. So this is a Coco Camaro. This is a brown car, which you don't see brown. Uh, this is a factory pinstripe on there. Uh, it has the chrome on it, so it's an X11 car, 427 car. So what makes it an X11 car, when I say that, is you have the chrome trim here. Yeah. here. And he's got a fair few Yankos as well. There is. Over, over here, we'll just kind of, I'll explain this one a little bit more in depth since this okay. is kind of the, uh, what do you say, the crown jewel of the collection is this area here. What do we got here? So this here is a 63 tanker car, 327 car, 360 horse, fuel injected, four speed. Uh, what makes this car super cool is that when I say a tanker, it has a 36 gallon fuel tank in it, which is supposed to replicate the Le Mans 24 hour car for Chevrolet that year. Uh, so the, only, the difference between that and if you see like another um, split window fuel injection car is this one. It doesn't have the carpet in the back. It has the plastic covering because the gas tank is huge in it. Uh, right. This is probably one of the best examples of a tanker car out there. Um, there's, there's probably a couple other super nice ones out there, but this one is this one they did a really really good job on. Brilliant. And then you get into this car here. This is a Fred Gibbs Nova. He's the guy who started the ZL1 program for Chevrolet. Um, this was one of his <coughs> personal cars. This was his wife's car. It has a 396 in it, and it has an auto in it, which is which is pretty rare from my understanding yeah for he, did, he did the swap himself and then you start getting into some of the the bigger cars so this is four zl1 cars here um it's i believe it's supposed to be the most zl1 cars in one area I well they're all 69s yep, and yep, looks like 69. it's one from each color yep. and they only made 69 of them the goal wow. is is to get every color of 69 ZL1 Camaro. That's now, Dennis's goal? That's that's the lifetime <laughs> goal, but you know, not all the colors have been found. Yes. Some of them have been bought up together. So yeah. it's it's a lofty goal. <laughs> to, to make well, he attends happen, these car shows like the good guys yep, and he yep. scouts out and cars. These, these are these are really nice cars. So this one actually won Muscle Car of the Year in 2015, but they're an aluminum head and block car, 427. And this is how it would have come in 69. Yep, yep. Uh, about as good of an example as one as you can get. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a couple other cars out there that are, that are equally as nice or have the original parts in the basement for them and, and whatnot. But, uh, but yep, you kind of you get a chance to see the different colors. Um, it's amazing. black one an 81 ZS28 is it a Z28 that, this is a Z28 Yanko car um, it is pro charge which is really really cool um, this was kind of Yanko's last ditch effort to get going on their own and it didn't work out that way uh, you see newer cars that say Yanko on them like you see some Yanko Camaros and I think there's a Yanko Corvette too. Um, that is Chevrolet now owns the name Yanko. They own the licensing for that, so okay. they can do that. But this was, I believe, one of the last cars that it was, was under a good Yanko effort. family name, right. and it was to um, 
This is this car is Just mostly look how unique a, it is. Yeah, this car is mostly original. Car there. And Dennis is there in the mural in the yep. back. So that mural there, that is the Don Yanko Chevrolet um, dealership. And all the cars that are in it is what we have here. <gasps> and yep, that is Dennis driving the, the orange Yanko. Yep, the one that we just saw over there. Uh, yep, that one yep. over there. Now this is a private museum, John. Yep, so this um, is not open to the public, um, but the Abach Classic is coming up the 23rd of July and you mm -hmm. can actually buy a ticket to come in and see it that Sunday, so that's July 24th. Uh, you can buy a ticket and that's when it's open up to the public with the purchase of a ticket at the car show. Now the profits from that show are actually going towards a charity foundation? Yep, it goes to the Ankeny Police Department, I believe. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, that's the chance for the public to see it. Other than that, it's a lot of business business people from yep. upstairs or car clubs or, um, what are you going to say, golf outings and stuff like that. Yep. But so people frequent, with, frequent this place a lot, but we're just not staffed to let people come no, and go. No, as they but want. <laughs> I, I love the idea of opening it up to the public every now and then yep. and doing shows and events to raise money for charity because yep. it's sure that's sure. great that's absolutely brilliant so <laughs> look at all these so here you see a lot of camaros yep in this room since you get or dennis can't get every color of z01 the new goal is get every color of 69 coco camaro <laughs> That's that's the new goal. That's and the he's, new he's goal. He's very very close to doing that's that. That's the new I goal. Believe he's only so he looks for it. Colors. He finds it. Well, you guys find it, and then you have to restore it. Yeah, back. I don't find that actually. Andy, my boss, he finds all that stuff. He yep. coordinates all that. He's online. He's got people out there looking, setting stuff up. I mean, it's that. But I mean, you're running out of room. Well, in the next, we, we moved the shop, we got rid of the restoration shop in there, and we moved about two miles down the road, okay. and that's going to be more showroom in there. So it's, it's, I remember when we said, Dennis said, we're not getting any more, yeah. and we're kind of slowing down, and next thing you know, he just explodes again. You know? I love it. I love the passion of him. Now, this is great, because hopefully next year, when I come back to, to cover the good guys, I can come back again and see what additional for sure and there's going to yep. be there's some bigger things in the works going okay. on uh hopefully that come through and it'll i think it'll make this collection uh, just one step one step higher one step better but uh it's it's already awesome it's already great in it's in itself i mean in itself you have a sign collection you have a gas globe collection um and that, that's that's crazy it really is well i appreciate your time coming and walking me through and telling us a little bit more about this awesome, awesome private collection. Appreciate yep, it. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, yep. John. Cheers.